what's more powerful than a GPT-4 model? A GPT-4 model that can self-reflect, learn from its mistakes, and self-correct. With this new paper, the ability of these models to learn is not restricted to their training data cutoff, but now they can improve themselves over time and learn from their own mistakes. It's fascinating, and now it gives AI models human-like reasoning abilities. The paper in question is called Reflection, an autonomous agent with dynamic memory and self-reflection. So you might ask, what is reflection and why it's significant? One of the biggest weaknesses of the current AI models are they're not able to learn from their mistakes. But with reflection, it gives an agent with dynamic memory and self-reflection capabilities the ability to enhance existing reasoning traits and task-specific action choice abilities. In simple words, now the model has the ability to memorize what action it has taken and then it can go back and look at those actions and correct its mistakes. Now the great thing about this approach is it's not really limited to chat GPT or GPT-4 models. It can work with any large language model and you don't really have to fine tune the model at all. It can work with existing models with just added reflection on top of it. So for example, in this case, you have two large language models. The first one generates a sequence of tasks, evaluates its rewards, and then you have the reflection model, which simply, based on these heuristics, look at the reward function and updates the action that needs to be taken by the original large language model. This added layer seems to give the models a huge boost in performance. So for example, the normal chat GPT-4 model, which can get a 67% accuracy on a code generation task, can go up to 88% accuracy with simply adding reflection on top of it. But these results are not part of the original paper. We're going to come back to them and see how they're different from the original paper. The original reflection paper gives results on two different data sets. And both of them are significant for its ability to reason. The first one is this hotpot QA data set, which is a data set for diverse, explainable, multi-hop question answering. Now, in this case, the language model has to go through multiple documents in order to find an answer. So it's not just an example of simple information retrieval, but it has to reason through multiple documents. The second data set is Elf World, aligning text and embodied environments for interactive learning. Now, I found this one a lot more interesting because they're combining text inputs and outputs with the physical world. So the model is able to interact with the physical world using these text prompts. Now, just by adding reflection, the model was able to do great on both these data sets. So for example, in the first case, on the Alf World data set, without reflection, the performance is around 70%. But with a reflection added, it goes to almost 97%. And keep in mind, we are not fine-tuning the model again. So it's the same base model. Similarly, on the Hotpot QA data set, the performance boost is around 20% which is very significant. Before showing you reflection in action with an example, let's look at what people are getting wrong about this paper. A lot of people are thinking that this paper uses GPT-4, but in reality, this paper is using GPT-3 and 3.5, which is chat GPT. And that's why this block force is significant because it added some more results, which we are going to look at. I want to show you how it works with an example and then we'll talk about how you can tie this with AutoGPT, which is going to be very significant. I have a video on that. If you haven't watched it, so watch that after this. So this example task is based on the hotpot QA dataset. The question at hand is, grown-ups starred the actor who was best known for his role on Olo Olo. So now the model divides this into different tasks and comes up with the first a thought experiment. This is what the model is thinking. I need to search grown-ups and Olo Olo, find the actor who starred in the grown-ups, then find the role he was best known for in Olo Olo. So initially, in the initial query, we want it to find out the name of the character. Now, it goes through uh, different uh, searches and observations, and it couldn't really figure out the name because it, the initial starting assumption is wrong. Then it reflects. I searched the wrong title for the show, Olo Olo, which resulted in no results. I should have searched for the show's main character, that's Gordon King, to find the role he was best known for in the show, right? 
and with this reflection it changes the strategy so now in the second uh, case it comes up with this thought process i need to search the actor who was best known for the role in Olo Olo and find out what role they were best known for and using this new strategy it comes up with the right answer this is exactly how a human being will approach a problem if they made mistake in the first place so we as a human would think what we did wrong and try to correct that in the previous video i showed you auto gpt where you give it an objective and it comes up with your own, its own task and execute them but now if you are able to add this reflection on top of those tasks then it will be able to modify the task on the fly so rather than coming up with the task in the start it just is to queue them sequentially and at the end it says that oh it couldn't figure out anything now it will be able to execute a task see what mistake it made then update the task and re-execute it that is true intelligence this paper is very significant however there is one major limitation to this paper this paper needs ground truth to work however several real world situations don't have a definitive ground truth or a single optimum location or a single optimum solution and that's where this blog post comes in in the blog post they have this section on reflection without definitive ground truth so this is significant and don't worry i'm going to break it down if it doesn't make sense so to address such situation they are talking about when there is no ground truth or optimal ground truth available we propose a method that again mirrors human problem solving when given a task whose solutions are not clearly defined we usually take time to plan and create an internal test suit based on our construction understanding either consciously or unconsciously so think about the escape room example in that case you will create a plan of what objects you're going to look at right so we evaluate various potential solutions against these tests and assign a confidence level to each adjustments are made until a solution that is likely to satisfy all or most of the tests which then becomes the proposed solution to be executed so in this scenario the solution that meets all or most internal test cases is accepted as the one likely to result in the ground truth and in and the chance of success relies on the probability of an erroneous test design now why it's significant they're actually not trying to solve the problem rather they come up with their own test so the model will actually come up with their uh, its own test and try to satisfy or pass most of the test so it's indirectly solving the problem not direct here is a visual representation of how this would look like so you have a task the model generates different tests and then see whether it can pass those tests or not like if it's able to pass those tests that becomes a proposed solution and if the test design is good enough then that will be close to the ground truth solution now the takeaway is that we don't care about accuracy bottleneck anymore so we are not try trying to increase the accuracy so we are shifting the accuracy bottleneck from correct synthetic and semantic code generation to correct synthetic and semantic test generation so in theory the test generation should be much easier to accomplish than code generation now to, in order to explain this let's look at an example so if you are a software developer you usually use follow these steps in test driven development so first as a human or as a software engineer you receive a description of the technical problem and list of goals so those are your requirements or design documents right then the human designs a number of unit tests that capture the ideal behavior of the program if you come up with unit tests then you write code for the actual problem to solve right and then you run the unit test against your code right and if it passes most of these then you say that okay it's good enough you send it to production or whatever code base you are working with so the authors of the paper actually tried this code generation data set and following the same example of a software developer approach they asked the ai agent to solve some programming tasks based on just the description of the task on this code generation task this new model with reflection so the gpt4 model with reflection blew every previous results out of the water so gpt4 model without reflection gives you around 67% accuracy and this one reflection plus gpt4 gives you around 88% accuracy i have seen somebody reporting it goes up to 91% accuracy as well and that is very significant now how does it do it so let's look at how the ai agent was implemented 
So the approach that uh, they adopted is listed here on this human evolved data set. In summary, all you have to do is simply provide it with the functional details and requirements. Then it will come up with a few unit tests based on the requirements that it receives. It will implement the code, test it against those unit tests, and see if it satisfies with those or not. If it's not, and it will go back, redo the functional implementation, and it will recreate the process. And based on the uh, functional requirements, it's actually a lot easier to simply come up with these unit tests rather than the whole code uh, correctly in a single flow. In the near future, say a couple of months, rather than defining step-by-step -step, uh, code generation programs, now you will be able to simply give it a whole bunch of instructions in a one go and then let the program iteratively improve its coding and give you the results. So this is going to be really fascinating to see in action. I want to close it with this thought. We as a human needs to reflect on what we are developing and what direction we want to take it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.